Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Ding. Today we're with Sanjeev Saxena, and he's the founder and chairman and CEO of POC Medical Systems. Welcome to our show, Sanjeev. Thank you, Diana. Really appreciate me having having me here. Thank you. So, give us a brief introduction of your company. So, POC Medical Systems is about a five-year-old company, five and a half-year-old company, and it was developed. Uh, from the standpoint of bringing diagnostics to the emerging world where you don't have diagnostics for most of the people in villages and rural communities. Mm -hmm. And towards that, we decided to develop our first product, which is for breast cancer screening. Mm, for breast cancers. That's right. And uh, why did you start this? So, <clears throat> when you look at uh, breast cancer, mm -hmm. There's about 1.6 billion women worldwide over the age of 40 who need to be screened. And today, the only screening tool available is mammography. Only 60 million women are screened today. And out of 60 million women, 2.5 million women are found to have breast cancer and about half a million women die every year. It's a big, big issue. And we all know that if you can screen these women early, and find them at stage one or two, mm -hmm. you can save their lives. Mm -hmm. And it also helps bring the healthcare costs down of the, of the economy. Mm -hmm. And so there were friends of mine whose mm -hmm. wives or sisters had, and mothers had passed away with breast cancer. Oh. And so this was a personal journey for me. Mm -hmm. My father had done the first computer-aided diagnostic system for breast cancer also. Well, back, when was that? That was back in the late 80s, early 90s. Mm. And that is the technology which is used today mm -hmm. with mammography to mm -hmm. read mammograms mm -hmm. uh, throughout the world. So your father was a 1.0 version of this. Uh, yes, you could call that that. <laughs> yes, uh, right so now you are... a legacy. Legacy, yes. Uh, a family champion. legacy and also your, you become your, you know, your dream to help so many people. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it if you look at breast cancer, it strikes each and every one of us. The, the woman is the person who keeps the family together. And when it affects her, it affects the whole family. Exactly. You know, when you go to, and so in the cities, you have mammography available. Mm -hmm. But when you go to countries like India and China and Africa, 80% of the population lives in rural communities mm -hmm. and they do not have access to mm -hmm. mammography. The only standard of care which is available is a physical exam. Mm -hmm. And these women have to disrobe mm -hmm. and so they avoid getting it done. And that is a big issue. Unless you screen and find it early, you mm -hmm. cannot save lives. Mm -hmm. So just imagine, if 60 million women are screened and 2.5 million women are found to have breast cancer mm -hmm. and a half a million women die, now if you extend that out to all the 1.6 billion women, mm -hmm. how many women are actually walking around with breast cancer and not even realizing? Yeah, I, I believe so. Right? That so many people, they don't, it could be, they don't realize, they don't exactly. even know. Yes. It could be hundreds. Mm -hmm. Uh, over a hundred million women mm -hmm. and the number of women who are dying every year mm -hmm. could be in the tr 20 to 30 million range. Just w imagine how many families destroyed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And now if you could find that early, mm -hmm. you could save their life. Wow, that's so wonderful. And I, I, you know, when I read about your biography, I was so amazed. You actually, you came to the United States at the age of 19. And yes. uh, you are a serial entrepreneur. This is not your first company, right? That's and correct. also your brother, your family, is whole, whole family is so innovative. Thank you. Yes, my, so when I came out here, I finished my college and my, I moved to California. I did my college in Lubbock, Texas, uh, engineering. And then my brother was just starting the first biotech. It was a biotech company back in the 80s. There were only 20 biotech companies at that time. And so I started to work with him on developing this instrument, mm -hmm. which was used to develop 
tests. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look at, at that time it was, we, we want to make money, we want to take it public and all of that. That was the mm -hmm. Wall Street dream. Mm -hmm. But what happened in that journey back in the 90s, there was a German who was working with us. He had uh, leukemia and he was given a drug which was made on the instrument that we were making. Mm -hmm. And had it not been for the instrument, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have, you know, the drug wouldn't have come out. So Mr. Ernie Gruen, who was our VP of Business Development, told my brother that, hey, with it, had we not brought this product, today I would not have been able to extend my life. And not only him, there's another friend of mine who actually worked on the drug uh, called Neupogen at Amgen mm -hmm. using our technology. And he ended up with, uh, with cancer and he was given the same drug. And that's when I realized that, I realized that what we do actually makes a difference in people's lives. Mm. And you were awarded at the Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2011 in India. You yeah. also was awarded at the World Congress with the 50s most social innovators. And you got so many awards. But what is the most awarding to you of what you're doing? I think it's more than the awards. It is we, you know, we are... If, I, if we can bring this into the market, mm. which is what we've got the Indian government backing us, we've got government in Luzhou, uh, Sichuan province backing us, we've got others who are backing us who are very interested in this. Being able to save lives mm. is the most important and rewarding thing. Mm. If, I, if we can help one person mm. and help that family, mm. it would be more than anything you can imagine. You found the calling of your life. And what, what kind of calling and that brought you to China in Sichuan province and Luzhou? Because, you know, uh, Sichuan is my hometown. Yes. But Luzhou is a place that it's not like a big city. And what brought you there? So um, I met the mayor of Luzhou. Mm. He, had, he was in, visiting... In Silicon Valley. Yes, he was actually visiting uh, Livermore, okay. which is where our office is. And uh, the mayor of Livermore uh, asked me to come and meet him. Mm -hmm. He was showcasing some of the companies mm -hmm. in Livermore. And so I met him and he said, you know, we are working towards screening 1.6 million women in Luzhou alone. Mm -hmm. And we need a product like this which could actually do it. And they were looking at technologies which were out there and the technologies were extremely expensive. There is like fifteen hundred, you know, fifteen hundred to three hundred dollars mm. per test. Mm. And so he asked me, "How much does this test cost?" I said, "It will cost less than five dollars a less patient." Than, less than five dollars. Less than five dollars a patient, oh. and with a drop of blood, mm -hmm. in less than thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. And he said, mm -hmm. "You know, if that's the case, Sanjeev, I want to come and see your product." Mm. And so he, the next day he cancelled all his meetings, mm. he came to our office, saw it, and he said, I want you guys to come into Lucia. Mm. We have a screening mm. program, we need this. Mm. So it's less than $5 within 30 minutes you That's can finish the, you know, the screening. Exactly. Uh, so this is a machine, right? And just exactly. show us uh, so how, this is how the that machine. works in, so in five, five dollars in so what we do, mm -hmm. this is this is the CD, mm -hmm. and I can, it's a CD mm -hmm. which looks just like any other DVD or CD. Mm -hmm. What we, so this is the version. We have what a we close do, picture of this so, so audience can see uh, how okay. this looks like. So what we do is we put a drop of blood here. Mm -hmm. Then the blood moves down, and here it goes through a separation process. So everything which you do in a lab is being done right on, here. On this? On this. Oh. So we just take, we prick the finger, put a drop of blood, mm -hmm. and then the blood cells remain here, and the plasma gets separated. This is what you do in the lab also. Mm -hmm. And then it moves down here. Mm -hmm. And in here, we have various antibodies. Mm -hmm. These antibodies have affinity for certain markers mm -hmm. in the blood. Mm -hmm. Now, 
this technology, the combination of these markers mm -hmm. was developed at Lawrence Livermore National mm -hmm. Labs. Mm -hmm. And what they showed was these four markers, when you take them and mm -hmm. put them together, mm -hmm. you can actually detect breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But they were developing it for the lab, which takes about six to eight hours. Mm -hmm. So then we developed a machine here and the CD, and we can do this by putting it in here in less than 30 minutes. Wow. So the antibodies capture the protein marker, then they move out here, mm -hmm. and then we shine a light from the bottom. Mm -hmm. So when you look at this machine, we've mm -hmm. got oh, yeah, the see. detector oh, yeah. and we've got the incubator. Oh. So we put the drop of blood, put it in here. Okay. The CD is put in. Yes, just put in here, yes. Okay. It's it goes a certain yes. way. Okay. And then we put this on to mm -hmm. lock it in. Mm -hmm. Put this out. Mm -hmm. And then we enter all the patient information in here. So it's going to show here? Yes. Oh. So after we have done, entered all the patient information, we hit run okay. and it runs it. Later, then it shows the results out here. So oh. I've already run this before, so I'll just show you some results. Okay. Wow. It's amazing. But when you you're talking about breast cancer when you have that uh, drop of blood and how do you tell it's a breast cancer or other cancer so what we have done is we have already determined mm. these four markers mm. now breast cancer is not one disease mm. it happens due to multiple reasons mm -hmm. and these are different pathways in the cells mm -hmm. which tell different proteins to be produced. Oh, okay. So breast cancer has got a bunch of pathways mm -hmm. and these particular proteins together is what tells you whether someone's got breast cancer mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. So after the run is done, then it shows the score. Okay. And in the score you can see if it's, it's a red, right, red, red. Red means that someone's got breast cancer oh. and they need to go in and get a biopsy done okay. right? or mammogram done. Mm -hmm. If it is a yellow, yes. it means some of the markers are elevated. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they have breast cancer but right But potentially now. they could. Right. So what you do is you have this patient. So in red, they go get mammograms and yes. biopsy. Mm -hmm. In yellow, depending on where it is, mm -hmm. they tell them come back in three, six or nine months. Mm -hmm. And if it is in a green, mm -hmm. like in this case, mm -hmm. it says you you're come healthy. back, you're healthy, come back in two years for your mm -hmm. next screen. Wow, I would like to have a test of right? this. Yeah. So it's literally, mm -hmm. you don't have to, see mammography mm -hmm. is very, very painful. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, in the US, we have mammography. Mm -hmm. In the Western world, we have it. In the major cities, you have it. But when you go to the rural communities, you have nothing. Yeah, the, the hospital is far away. Far away. And also, people don't want to go because it's very expensive. It's expensive, mm -hmm. but not only that. Who does mammography? Who does all these tests, mm -hmm. generally? Mm -hmm. The imaging centers and the doctors are men. Yes, mostly. And so now the women have to go and disrobe. They don't want them to touch their want, breast. Exactly. Yeah, they don't want to. So here, we don't get into that. <coughs> mm -hmm. You take the, uh, the blood and you put it in and it gets done. <coughs> now if it comes red, mm -hmm. now you have to go in and get the test done. Mm. So out of, you know, rather than having all 1.6 billion women go and get mammograms done, mm -hmm. which is painful Just and not bring this to them. Exactly. <laughs> Just you bring can, this, yes. You can literally take this to a so village. So you can put a battery here, then you don't even need a power so supply for a while. So right now you see it's running on battery. Yeah, it's running on battery. And yes. it runs mm -hmm. up to 10 hours 10 on the hours. batteries. 10 hours, wow. Right? So you can do this test mm -hmm. and then go back and uh, recharge the battery. 10 hours means 20 people because 30 minutes per each person. No, actually no? it means about 80 people. 80 people. Because oh. on this you can run 10 patients at a time. Oh, 10 patients at a time. Right. Wow. So it takes you about 30 minutes to mm -hmm. set up, mm -hmm. 30 minutes you enter mm -hmm. all the patient information, mm -hmm. 30 minutes to do the test. And so you can do 80 patients a day on one machine. Very efficient. Right? It's very efficient. And so efficient. now you can go into a village, mm. set this up just like I've set it up. I can take your finger, prick your finger, mm -hmm. take the blood, put it in here, mm. and it will do it.
Mm, this is really a re revolutionary. So this is a lab this. in a box. Yeah, lab, lab, lab in the box. Yes, that's, so that's really government in of India mm. with Prime Minister Modi. Mm. They are planning. To you screen. demoed for him. Yes, we did. Yes, and so he's asked us to bring this in. Mm -hmm. In the state of Gujarat, the government there has placed an order with us mm -hmm. for eighteen hundred machines. Wow, eighteen hundred. And so where a does million this... discs. Wow. to screen 10 million women just in one state. Mm -hmm. This is a pilot project. Mm -hmm. And once, so later this year, we will start shipping. Mm -hmm. We are working with partners to make this. Mm -hmm. We cannot make it ourselves. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, we have a it's machine It's a manufacturing, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, so we are, we are talking to CD and DVD manufacturers mm -hmm. who will make so where, this for us. So where is this manufacturing? And you already started this, right? So we have a small pilot plant in Livermore, mm -hmm. but we are now partnering with a group in uh, the Middle East mm -hmm. to make this for us. And then this and loading of the disc with the reagents will all be done in Luzhou. In China, Luzhou? Yes. Sichuan province? That's correct. Oh, congratulations. That's Thank you. Quite an achievement. So the Luzhou government has mm -hmm. given us a, a manufacturing plant, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. 6,000 square meters, mm -hmm. and they're giving us a grant of uh, $4 million mm -hmm. to set up the manufacturing mm -hmm. there. Wow, that's really amazing. But even though uh, now at this stage, but I think that you know the needs for this could be really huge. Uh, have so you started to pr produce the, the this we equipment? We have just made the first 50 machines so far. Oh, only first and 50. And we have made about, we have made a few thousand discs on, uh, on, a, on a CNC machine, mm -hmm. but that's not the way you can make this. You have to make it in large scale. Mm -hmm. Mm. So we have to go to injection molding, mm. and we are in the process mm. of doing that right but now. But you know, for the medical device like this, and you need, uh, you know, all the certificates like exactly. Uh, you need F yes. FDA approval. FDA's approval. Have you got that? Not yet. We are in the process. We have had discussions with FDA out here, and they have told us what we have mm. to do. We have also met with the CFDA in China. Mm. And they have asked us to do certain things. Mm -hmm. So first thing is mm -hmm. to set up manufacturing in China and then go through the CFTA process. Mm -hmm. In India, we have talked to the DCGI. Mm -hmm. And the DCGI, we've got four centers mm -hmm. approved for clinical study, mm -hmm. where we are going to be conducting the clinical study in India. Mm -hmm. So far, we have tested over 850 patient samples. 850 patient right. samples. Okay. And we have found a sensitivity. What's the result for this? So the result is we have got a sensitivity of over 91% and mm. specificity mm. of over 93%. Mm. Now, compare that to mammography, mm. which is the standard of care. Yes. Mammography's sensitivity is about 65 to 70%. Mm. This oh. is way above oh, that. Oh, really? Yes. Mammography only 70%. Less than 70%. I, I didn't know that. It is very low. Oh. And generally, if mm -hmm. you have a microcalcification, mm -hmm. you will not be able to find that. Mm -hmm. It has to be above 100 micron. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a tumor. Mm -hmm. And when you, in, in low resource settings, they do the, fl the physical exam, the mm -hmm. clinical breast exam. Mm -hmm. That is even lower. That's mm -hmm. only 25 to 30%. Mm -hmm. And the false positive rate with mammography is about three to four per image. Oh. Per image, not per person, per image. And what so that why, means- So why is that? Why is that? Because there are artifacts in the breast mm -hmm. which look like masses. Mm -hmm. They could be a density, mm -hmm. they could be a nodule, mm -hmm. they could be microcalcifications which are not mm -hmm. cancerous. Mm -hmm. They, they're just deposits, cal mm. calcium deposits. So they all look like cancers, but they're not cancer. Mm. What they're looking for is an image, mm -hmm. right? And while taking the image, it all depends on how much radiation is mm -hmm. emitted, all that. But when you do this, you don't really care about the image. You look at the pathways, the reason why mm -hmm. there's the breast mm -hmm. cancer. The patterns, the compare with the patterns. The pathway. Oh, path the uh, pathway. Pathway. Yeah. So that means you have in the, the, the cells are telling other cells what to do. So you're looking and it sends a signal. 
That's what the cells do. They communicate to each other by sending signals, and those are called proteins. Mm. Those are the protein markers, mm. and we are looking at that. Mm. So it is telling it produce more cells. Mm. Cancer is nothing but production of more cells without without other cells dying in that area. Mm. So if you can block that production of cells, you can kill cancer. Mm. That's what they do in, in uh, chemotherapy. They kill those cells mm -hmm. by bombarding it with radiation or chemo chemotherapy agents. But that's also uh, you know, harmful for your body. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So the key thing is finding it early. Mm -hmm. If you can do it early, then you can take care of it mm. very early. This equipment, your invention, actually improved the efficiency and accuracy. It not only in increases the efficiency and uh, improves the accuracy, but it also, here's the economical part to it. Mm. See, if you're, in a, if you're a villager, mm. you're a farmer, mm or a daily worker, you, or even in the urban sector, you're so busy, now you have to take time off and go and get a mammogram done or a biopsy done mm -hmm. or a physical exam, or you have to travel from distances mm -hmm. and it may take you a whole day mm -hmm. because you don't have the right infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now you can take this there, mm -hmm. you can get this test done right then and there and go on and do your work. Do you need a you know trained uh, people to do this test? No, no. Literally, like mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. all you need to know is how to. Just like you do a glucose test at home mm -hmm. for diabetes, you do the finger prick and put and that put in. Blood, your, yeah, blood drop. And there. you enter the patient information. That's mm -hmm. it. So you you can literally you don't need a trained technician. Mm -hmm. You can train any person to do this test. Mm. Wow, this is amazing. And their uh, result will be stored on, on cloud, the on big the data. Cloud. Yes. Exactly. And the doctor that is the can access part. to that, right? So doctor can access it, mm -hmm. but the bigger thing is you can get this data into the cloud mm -hmm. and tomorrow when you have lots of information, you can look at which pathway, which marker is upregulated in which environment. Mm. So you might find in California there's one particular pathway which is more active, mm -hmm. whereas in another country it may be something else. You can look at environmental, food habits, etc. Mm -hmm. And now you can get into preventive medicines, mm. you can get into developing new medications, mm. which has not been possible today because that data doesn't exist. Mm. So this is like a big data and AI. Yeah, too. So this is a data acquisition tool mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if you mm -hmm. look at it from that standpoint. Yes. And to, today we are doing this, tomorrow we are looking at cervical and lung cancer and other diseases. Mm -hmm. So you'll start getting that data and you'll be able to start going into, into predictive. Mm -hmm. What is happening, where, environmental impacts, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. And what kind of medications need to be developed. Mm -hmm. therapies which have to be developed, the insurance companies need that information, the pharma companies need that information. So it's got a wide impact. Mm, wow, that's so wonderful. Our time is almost there. Well, thank you so much for coming to our show. No, Last question. You. Last sure. question. Uh, talking, we, we, this is innovation dialogue. So how do you define innovation in one or two sentences? Innovation, in, to me, is mm -hmm. something which can make a wide-ranging impact and change the way things are done. Mm -hmm. So if you can go in and disrupt mm -hmm. the way things are being done currently, mm -hmm. that is innovation. Disrupt is the thing that done currently. And so also, for example, mm -hmm. in our case, mm -hmm. the way medical diagnostics mm -hmm. is done today mm -hmm. is in centralized labs. Now you can take this into a village mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you're disrupting the whole diagnostic yes. uh, continuum. And at the same time also taking care of more people and taking the social responsibility. Absolutely. Yes, help uh, the people who are And doing it need. at the yes. lowest cost mm -hmm. possible. Yeah, a low cost, okay. That is the critical thing. Yes. Is bringing, we all talk about bringing healthcare costs down and bringing it to everyone. Mm -hmm. Bringing healthcare to everyone. Mm -hmm. For me, that's what this is important. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.